Hey everyone, it's Grace. Welcome to the lab. We're gonna brew some coffee today. We're gonna be brewing the Ethiopia Banco using a bypass. What's a bypass? A bypass simply means you are going to add water to dilute a concentrated cup of coffee. You are bypassing the brewed coffee to add water. Let's break that down even further. Coffee is made up of 98 to 99% water. The rest of it, that one to 2%, that's in your beverage that you were drinking is the good stuff. It's gonna be sugars and acids and fats. So a coffee beans mass is 18 to 22% extractable. That has good qualities in it. 70% of it is empty carbs and plant fibers. And then 10% of it is just bad solubles that you do not want in your brew. When you are brewing a coffee, there's a process in which the compounds are extracted. It starts with the acids, which make up the sour and acidic part of the brew. Next up is going to be the fats. And the fats are going to make the coffee taste syrupy and oily, and that's giving it its body. And then the sugars, making the coffee taste sweet and floral and fruity. Those are the compounds you want in your brew. After the sugars comes the plant fibers and carbohydrates. We want a little bit of that because it creates balance within the brew and balance is good. Some of those carbohydrates bring some sweetness, some earthiness and some bitterness. And again, we want a balanced brew. What would happen if we stopped the brew and manipulated how much carbohydrates and plant fibers were going into our brew? So let's try it out and see what happens. Now I know this is a lot of information to take in but bear with me, it's all gonna make sense at the end and you're gonna be able to make a bypass brew at home. So before we get started brewing, I just want to break it down a little bit more for you. So we have our coffee brewing control chart here. Over here on this side, we have strength. And over here at the bottom, we have extraction. This is solubles yield and this is solubles concentration. The solubles yield is going to tell us how much of the coffee beans mass we're extracting, which we want it to be within 18 to 22%. If we start around 14% here, go up to 26% here, we want it to land right here in the middle, which would be anywhere from 18 to 22. Over here, we have our TDS, which is our total dissolved solids. So those are the compounds that are making up our brewed coffee. So it could be anywhere from maybe 0.9 to 1.8. And again, we want it to hit in the center anywhere from 1.15 to 1.45. If your brew is within optimum balance, it's going to fall right here in the center of our chart. To reiterate, the TDS, the strength solubles concentrate, is going to be how much, how much is in our brew, how much total dissolved solids is in our brew. And then our extraction, which is soluble yield, is going to be what, what, is coming out. That's going to be our fats and acids, and then our sugars, and then our plant fibers. Okay, how do we figure this out? How do we find out how many total dissolved solids are in our coffee? We have here, this is called a refractometer. This is very specific to coffee. If you want one of these, and you wanna use it in your brewing process, you have to get a refractometer that is specific to coffee. They make other ones for, you know, honey or wine, but you have to have the one that is for coffee. Now this is going to measure our total dissolved solids. And then once we have that, there is a unique little formula that will help us figure out what our extraction, our solubles yield is. And that's gonna tell us if we're in optimum brew. I know this is a lot of information. We're gonna put this to the side for now. We are going to brew a coffee, the Ethiopia Banco, using a bypass. So we'll put this to the side for now. You can always check your strength and extraction purely by taste. Refractometer is nice to have, but you don't need it. So I'm gonna brew the Ethiopia Banco. This is a uh, new coffee on our lineup. It just scored a 96 on coffee review. It is very fruity, very floral, very delicate. And so normally when I brew this coffee, I would just brew it at a one to 17 to enhance aroma, enhance the floral notes, drink it black so that it kind of resembles like a very delicate tea, but it has a lot of unique nuanced flavors. But today, since I'm brewing with a bypass, I'm going to brew using a one to 13 ratio, and then we are going to dilute 
our concentrated beverage to get the coffee's strength and extraction to our liking. The best way to do this is to taste it as you go and add water as you're tasting. We are going to go further with that and use the refractometer and check our TDS on our brewing control chart. But for now, let's brew the coffee how we would normally at a one to 13. I'm gonna do everything normally. I'm gonna have my grind size the same. I'm going to wet my filter. I'm going to brew in a nice, consistent, controlled manner. I'm not gonna change anything in my brew or my grind. I'm only gonna change my ratio because the one thing we're focusing on today is brewing with a bypass. We are adding water. We are bypassing the brew, adding water so that we can get this coffee to our strength and extraction liking. So I'm gonna do everything the same. I'm wetting my filter to get the papery taste out of the filter, to heat my decanter up. And this is something I always do. I think it's important because it maintains heat and it also, again, gets rid of any papery taste. We're doing a one to 13 ratio. So I'm using 16 grams of coffee and going to 208 milliliters out. We're gonna get into our bloom here, tear my scale, start my timer to bloom my coffee. The blue is important because that's when all of the acids are being extracted from our coffee and the acids are what is giving that more sour and acidic, bright liveliness to the coffee. And we're gonna keep that all the same. I'm gonna start my timer. Gonna hit 32 grams and we'll let that bloom for 30 seconds. CO2 is being released, gases are being released um, during the bloom process. So again, bloom is so important, make sure you bloom. So the acids are the simplest compound, molecularly speaking. So the water is able to easily dissolve them into the liquid coffee. So we do this nice and slow. We're only going to 208 grams, so we don't want to brew too fast either. I'm just going to agitate this a little bit just to make sure that nothing is stuck or trapped underneath. Next up, we are extracting the oils and fats in the coffee, which add body to our brew. They're not particularly simple, chemically speaking. Instead, they are hydrophobic and easily wash out of the ground coffee. Again, nice and slow, maintain a very consistent brew so that we don't get through this brew too quickly. Because even though we're doing a one to 13, which is less water, we still want to hit our time. So around two minutes and 30 seconds to three minutes. So the sugars are being extracted next. Even simple sugars are more molecularly complex than acids. As such, water needs more time and energy to fully dissolve them. We're almost to our time. I'm gonna let that settle a little bit before I add my final brew. But I'm liking the way this looks. This is brewing at the speed I want it to brew. Now, if we were to extend this and go into like a one to 15 or one to 17 ratio, which is what I said I would traditionally do with this brew, the water would eventually start to break down the plant fibers. And that's what's gonna hold the ground coffee together. Okay. And so like all plant matter, so if you think of celery or kale, they have that bitterness to it. The same thing would be happening with this coffee when we get to that stage of the brew process. Our water is about to hit the grinds on our bed of coffee. So I'm gonna pull the V6 seat from the decanter and see what we got. You might notice brewers or your baristas, they're always picking up their, their decanter and swirling it around. And now that's gonna make sense to you because the brew process happens in stages and you wanna make sure everything is nice and combined. Now that we have our brewed coffee, I need to weigh how much liquid yield I have. You may think it's 208 grams, but it's not. So we need to weigh it. So I got a different decanter. I'm gonna pour my liquid in here and we're just gonna take note of how much liquid yield we have. So this is 
169 liquid yield out. I'm just gonna write that down somewhere. Just write it down on your paper. Make sure that you know that that's what that is. Okay, and then we're just gonna set it to the side. Now here's the fun part. We're gonna check the TDS of this coffee as it is. We're not gonna add any water to it yet. Let's just see what our total dissolved solids are at. That's our solubles concentration. That is how much coffee solubles are in our brew. It's important to always calibrate your refractometer. You can do that with a little bit of distilled water, get a little alcohol swab, clean up the eye, make sure that there's nothing on there that could manipulate any of the uh, reading. I've already done all of that, so we're just gonna jump into getting a reading from our refractometer. So I'm gonna get a little bit of coffee from my brew. This needs to be about room temperature. You don't need much, just enough that it's gonna fill the eye here in our refractometer. Once this has reached room temperature, we can go ahead and add it to our eye. And then we're gonna close the lid and we're gonna push go. Our TDS is at 1.7. Now we have to get three readings in a row that are the same for that reading to be accurate. We're at 1.78, so we're gonna keep going because it did change. We're at 1.78 again, 1.79, so we're gonna keep going. 1.79, 1.8. So we got a reading of 1.81 three times in a row, so that is our TDS. Add it right here where it says 1.81. We're gonna make sure we know that that's our TDS, okay? We know that our TDS is at 1.81. That's all the way up here at the top of our graph. So we're gonna make a mark at 1.81. Now that we know what our TDS is, we have to figure out what our solubles yield is. How much is being pulled out of the coffee beans mass of 18 to 22%. There's a formula. So since we know how much liquid yield we have out, which is 169, we know what our TDS is at 1.81. We are going to times the two of those. So we're gonna do 169 times 1.81. That gives us 305.89. Now we're going to divide that by how many grams of coffee we use, our dose. We did 16 grams, so we're gonna do divided by 16. And that is gonna give us our extraction. So 305.89 divided by 16, 19, 0.118, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's really cool. We actually are landing within range. We're at 19. So here's where we're landing in our graph. That is not in the box. So it's very clear that our TDS, our strength is way too high. That's where the bypass comes into play. We are going to add water to our brew to bring the solubles concentration down into optimum brew so it lands within our balanced brew box. We can do that by continuously checking with the refractometer, or if you don't have one of those, you get to do it just by taste. I'm gonna add 50 milliliters of water, which is gonna bring me to 224 grams of liquid yield. That's going to bring me into a one to 14 ratio, technically, which is within optimum ratio guide of a 114 to a one to 20. At home, you don't have a refractometer. Maybe you like things a little stronger. Maybe you want it to taste a little weaker. So what I suggest you do is add water, dilute water, bypass, with 10 milliliters, taste it, add another 10 milliliters, taste it, and keep doing that until you reach your desired preference of taste. So again, bypassing, what does that mean? It means we are adding water, we are bypassing the coffee brewing and adding water directly into our decanter, directly into our already brewed coffee. Okay, so now I'm at 224 grams, 224 milliliters. Now I'm gonna just give everything a nice swirl, pull some out with my syringe and test it on my TDS once again and see where we are at. Now I'm just checking my TDS. Again, we need that number to be the same three times. So we're gonna keep testing it until it's showing the same number three times in a row. So we're at 
1.36, so 224 times 1.36 equals divided by 16 gives us 19.4. Not only did we fall with an optimum brew on our TDS at 1.36, we also are hitting our extraction solubles yield at 19. So here we are directly in the center of the box, right where we want to be, optimum brew. That's the extra sciencey, nerdy side of coffee. This is the kind of thing they're doing at brew competitions, especially coffee association classes. Um, if you have a refractometer, if you want to get yourself a refractometer, they are for sale. They're quite expensive, but if you don't have one and you're at home and you want to do a bypass, you can absolutely do it based on taste. So let's try it and see how it tastes because at the end of the day, taste rules all. Again, make sure it's mixed up because there are stages to brewing. We've added a bypass as well. So we wanna make sure everything's evenly distributed. Okay, here we go. This is super balanced, but I'm not getting as much bitterness either, which I think is the whole, that's the goal here with, the, with diluting our coffee and using a bypass method to bring out more sugars and fruity qualities, floral qualities, the delicate qualities of coffee, and decreasing the plant fibers and empty carbohydrates that are being brewed into your coffee as well. We're basically bypassing that too and adding water so that it's clean, aromatic, nothing but delicious coffee. You're at home, maybe you don't have one of these, but if you don't, you're just gonna taste as you go until you get to your preferred strength, your preferred taste. It's okay that it might be different from what I like or what someone else likes. Coffee is subjective and that's what makes it so fun. But the bypass is great to use and brew with if you are brewing it for you and a friend because perhaps your taste is different from theirs and you can enjoy the coffee together at different strengths. A good example for the bypass is the Americano. The Americano has been around for a very long time, since the 1940s, when World War II soldiers would dilute their espresso with water because it was just too strong and too concentrated for them. And that's a bypass. They're just bypassing the espresso with water, creating a coffee that is suitable to their liking. This is one to try. This is an amazing coffee. Again, it scored a 96 on Coffee Review. Don't miss out. Try the bypass. Let me know what you think. Cheers.